Sometimes in your game, you want something to happen randomly, that is, by chance. In other words, you don't want to have to program in, generate an enemy at this point, or place my character at this location, or have the coins be found at this particular location. You want them to be somewhere on the screen randomly. The great thing with a random location for things is it gives the player the feeling that the game is new all the time, that they're not getting used to the repetition of things. So random is a very, very useful um, function to be using and something that's well worth putting into your games as soon as you can and as soon as you understand how it works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to code a very simple thing and explain to you how the random code word works. So to start with, let's put a couple of variables in. X, I'm going to make the middle. Y, I'm going to make in the middle. I'm going to draw a circle. So I'm going to give it a radius of four and a color, um, let's say red. And then we're going to have a function draw, remember end your functions, and this is going to clear the screen, and then it's going to do a circ fill, and it's going to do it at x, y with a radius and a color. And if we escape and run, there is our circle, exactly as we described it. So in other words, it has a radius of 4, a color of 8, and a location in the middle. Now there's a function in Pico8, which is this, random. And random will generate a random number between 0 and the number that's placed in between the brackets. So as a very basic idea, I can make the size of the circle a random number from 0 to 4. So if I run it, small, bigger, big again, big again, big again, small. Not exciting, but at least there's some sort of variation in there. And I could do the same for all of these. So I could say, okay, let, let's make it a random color. Gray. And so on. Okay. So I can get different colors and you can see different colors and different sizes running all the time. This is quite useful. And I could potentially place it at a random location around the screen. So if I make it a random 127, remembering that's the size of the entire game screen, then I can have squares appearing in all sorts of different locations. Okay. Now you might notice that it's becoming a little bit irritating having to um, press the um, escape and run button every time. So I'm just going to write a little bit of code that does this for me every time so that I don't have to keep doing it. So if button four, then I'll make sure I put the end in. I can take all this stuff and put it in here. So now I can do it by pressing button four, which is a lot easier. And you can see my circle zipping around the screen. Okay, it's like something out of 2001 A Space Odyssey. No, we're not quite as colorful. So you can see how random can be used quite easily. Now what is important is the type of value that random produces. It doesn't produce an integer. I shall show you this by printing on screen the color that we've generated. Okay, so I'm going to put it in the top left corner up there. So there it is, and each time I press it you can see we're getting a number that is not an integer. So it's saying the color is 6.0636, .06 or the color is 3.6991. Well that's quite interesting, let's have a look at that one. 3.6991. If I press escape and come to our colors here, this color is color three, and that was the color that the circle was drawn. It's drawn that green color, so there's the color. But the value was 3.6991, okay? So what it's doing is it's rounding it down every single time, but not rounding it down in the mathematical sense. It's doing what's called a floor. In other words, it's sinking it to the nearest integer. But we can force that to actually happen. So we can use this function instead floor. And what floor does is take any number and reduce it to its lowest integer. So as an example, if I say print the floor of C, then you can see now that we have a single value given. And that's much, much clearer as to what's going on. So sometimes you can use random, but you can also combine random with this really, really useful function called floor. And that will 
give you an integer value. Sometimes you want to add some values to the random number. So you want a level of randomness and then some additional values on top. So I might want a random eight, but I don't want any of these dull colors here. So I don't want blue, purple, green, brown, gray. I want to start up here at color six. So I'm gonna add six to my list of colors. And so now when I run, we should get a lot of brighter colors. I need to do it down here as well, plus six. There we go, we've got some nice bright colors coming through. Okay, and you can see we've got six popping up sometimes, but nothing lower, because we've added six every time, and I get much brighter circles. And I can do the same for the radius. I can say, okay, as a minimum, I want it to be four, uh, sorry, I want the randomness to be on four, but I want it to begin at 10. And again, I put the same down here. So now when I run it, I get much bigger circles. And of course I could go even larger, maybe make this at 25, and we can start to get some sort of, oh, I haven't put it down here, 25. So I now get really big circles happening. Okay, so that's a great way of getting random things to happen. All right, and as another example, let me take this button out instead, this, this code here. Let's not have it happen with um, a button press. Let's say if random 10 is less than one, so what we're doing now is we're generating a number from 0 to 10 randomly. If that number is less than 1, it's going to regenerate the circle. So if we run it, you can see it runs, but it's running randomly. Sometimes it does, and then it waits for a bit until the random number is less than 1. So you can use random to generate different locations for things, but also to have things happen at certain times. And it doesn't take much to realize that if I make this a two, the circles will appear very often because a random number between naught and two is going to be less than one quite a lot. And if I make it 25, then it's going to have quite large gaps between things. So that's how to use random. It's a very, very useful function. And sometimes you can pair it up with this other function, FLR, to give you integer values but otherwise it will just generate a random number between naught and the value you put in here. And if you use it in a function like an if statement, like this, you can use it to make things happen at random intervals. And if you use it in a vet with a variable, you can use it to assign random colors or sizes or locations for particular objects. So that's random, a very, very useful function. Happy programming.